So this is the micro motor and this is the way we use our gates grid and drill. So we put it like this. Lock it. So this is the gates grid and drill number one. The gates grid and drill has a long thin shaft ending in a flame shaped head as you can see with a safe tube to guard against perforations. The flame head cuts laterally and used with gentle apically directed pressure. The long shaft is designed to break at the neck, the narrowest diameter that lies adjacent to the handpiece. If the drill binds during use, it will fracture at the neck of the shaft and will extrude from the tooth. The fractured segment is easily removed by grasping the broken shaft with pliers and pulling it out of the tooth. It is mainly used to remove the lingual shoulder during excess preparation of anterior teeth and to enlarge the root canal orifices. In place of using the SX file, you can also use the gates 2 and gates 3. So just like that, you have to make the entry only till this point. Only just where the drill is there. If, if you enlarge it totally inside, it may cause ledge formation. So just remember, using the fingers very slowly, finger rest, just insert it little bit and just take it out. So this is the use of the gates get and drill. So now I am doing the opening of the premolar tooth. As you can see I have mounted many tooth and I have filled with temporary filling so that it's easy to understand. So what you have to do is, so the premolar tooth has a buccal curse and a palatal curse and the pulp hun are just directly present on the buccal curse and the palatal curse. So how you have to make the SS opening is you just have to make a punch hole. So at one point you will get the bird drop, till now I have not got the bird drop. But again I will try it for one more time. Yeah, yeah it's done now. So I have achieved the bird drop, now I will show you. This is the three-way syringe. Already we have started seeing the canal. So as I had shown you in the anterior tooth, uh, we'll just check the patency and see how I have made the opening. The opening is oval in shape and one side it's a buccopilatal opening. It's not like mesodistal opening. So this is the buccal side, this is the palatal side. So I insert it here and it's going nicely in a watch winding motion. Number 8 file you can see. Then again palatally you can see here. So I have got both the canals and you can see both the canals like buccal and palatal. Now what is your duty? Your duty is to remove the extra dentin which is lying above it. And you have to reach your file till the apex of the tooth. Now what you will do is you will insert this file into the patient's mouth. One more file you have to insert it palatally. After inserting both these files, we have to take a x-ray and know the working length of the tooth. I have already noted down the working length of this tooth. It's around 18.5 mm for the buccal cusp and 19 mm from the 19 mm for the palatal canal. So now again with watch winding motion, we'll clean it. Similarly, like the anterior tooth, we will irrigate it again irrigation in both the canals this buccal canal and palatal canal after irrigation we have to widen the apex of the tooth how will we widen we will just widen with the sx file for the beginners so start with the sx file just this much rotation then reverse 90 degree rotation 3 fourth and 90 pull it similarly palatally 3 fourth and 90 degree pull it So now my gate grid and drill is moving at a medium speed. Now how I do the coronal flaring? So just I put it inside little bit, just little bit. Just little bit. And see how wide my canal is looking now. The first is the coronal flaring file or the SX files. Instead of it we can also use the gates grid and drill. 
so this one you can use in only 5 to 6 canals this one you can use in many canals around 15 to 20 but you have make sure you autoclave them then is the S1 shaping 1 shaping 2 F1 and F2 similarly in this tooth we have to use this SX as I showed SX you can use or you can even use the gates git and drill with the micro motor then the shaping file around 18 mm you have to set it around 18 mm so this is the endo block we have to measure it till 18 mm dense use only dense ply endo block it's the best I'm using this since five years see the condition is so good so this is our tooth we have to set the measurement we have to shape it shape it, shape it both the canals one canal 18.5 the other one 19 shape it like this then same S2 file we again have to measure it 18 mm before that we have to do the irrigation with saline or sodium hypochlorite 5% after irrigation we have to use the S1 file shaping file 3 4 rotation 90 degree back rotation then the F1 file which is the last file for the premolars So all the anodontic instruments are available in 2%, 4% and 6% taper. You must have heard people talking about this. Taper denotes the per millimeter increase in the file diameter from the tip towards the file handle. So in other words, a number 20 file has a tip diameter of 0.2 mm and would have a 0.22 mm diameter 1 mm from the tip and 0.24 mm 2 mm from the tip and 0.26 mm 3 mm from the tip. So greater taper instruments have been developed which are around 4%, 6%, 8% and even 10%. Taper instruments help in preparing canals of wider diameter without over enlarging the canal at the working length. Thus a 30 size file with 2% taper, 30 size file with 4% taper and 30 size file with 6% taper all would have the same tip diameter of 0.3 mm. This is F2, this is the F1 file. Three fourth rotation and reverse rotation and pull. Similarly, in the parallel canal, as you can see here, three fourth rotation, ninety degree rotation back and pull. So you see how nicely the canal is being prepared of both buckle and palatal and buckle sides. So before starting of the rotary root canal, rotary RCT or rotary endodontics. So first we should be well versed with the endo motor. So the, this is a basic endo motor which is, is radar and uh, the price is also very economical. So where you have the um, hand piece where you can attach it like this. So you should oil it here not here. The, it contains the battery and the motor and on switch. You can see uh, various numbers like P2 this is program. So there are different programs first of all we will check with that. So P3, P4, P5 and first number denotes the program suppose P1 and uh, the rotation is 550 revolutions per minute and torque is 2 550 and the torque is 2 and this is not in the auto reverse mode this is just in the forward mode so suppose we want to change the RPM what we have to do is we have to press this button set and then you can increase it or you can decrease it So we have set the revolutions to 200. Now you want to change the torque. Suppose the torque is 2 and you want to reduce the torque on the endo motor. Then you can reduce it by pressing this button. So now see I am reducing the torque. Next I want to change the setting to which mode I want to keep it. So the we can change the mode by again pressing the this button you can see you can see the modes are changing so this is the auto reverse mode and uh, where the end motor will automatically reverse when it gets any kind of obstruction so this is set suppose again I want to set it second P2 I want to change to 500 rpm and 2 torque so what I have to do is again I have to set S then I have to increase it to 500 then again we have to press the S 
then we have to increase the torque or decrease the torque so it's very easy and uh, usually i tell my beginner students to just use the auto reverse mode instead of any other mode because that is the easiest mode to use so this is the maxillary first premolar tooth as you can see from the sides it's the buccal cusp and this one is the palatal cusp so 70% of the times the root are separated but this is 27% of the time the root are fused but this tooth is having two canals as you can see here the buccal canal and the palatal canal usually the palatal canal is much wider than the buccal canal this one i have already prepared it for you guys now next we are coming on to the maxillary second premolar here also we can see the two canals are there and this is quite close to the maxillary sinus so all the premolar tooth are slightly tipped towards the distal side as you can see here the root tip is slightly distally curved so 30 to 40% of the times it's curved so this is the maxillary molar tooth which is having three roots and it is the palatal root is quite in proximity with the maxillary sinus so we can see there is a mesobuccal cusp so the mesobuccal canal is just underlying the mesobuccal cusp then below the mesobuccal canal is the mb2 canal here we cannot appreciate it but it is usually in the line connecting the mesobuccal canal and the palatal canal somewhere in between it will you will find that palatally so here we are looking into the cbct of a maxillary molar and uh, this is the pulp chamber and as we go deep inside we can see that uh, there is a mb1 canal mb2 canal distobuccal canal and palatal canal so the mb2 canal is just parallel to the mb1 canal and this is the maxillary sinus then there is the distobuccal canal so this tooth is always carious so i have already prepared it not an ideal tooth but this is just to show you the roots so it is having the largest pulp chamber the maxillary molar tooth so now this is the maxillary third molar as you can see the roots are fused and i don't suggest to do the root canal of the maxillary third molars because usually it is a vestigial and uh, better to extract it now we are coming to the lower anteriors this is the lower central incisor as you can see and uh, the root is quite straight so one important thing that you uh, you must be knowing that there is only one canal but in few cases 30% of the cases we get two canals in the mandibular central incisor now you can see the cbct here so this is the lower let central incisor and uh, we can see two canals here which are filled this is the gutta paka so this is the axial section these are the two canals of the lower central incisor we can clearly appreciate so this is the axis opening point and the two canals are getting divided like this where you can see there are two canals in the lower anterior central incisor teeth now this is the mandibular premolar you can see it's the close proximity to the mental foramen and the root is also curved sometimes during the infection of the mandibular premolar teeth the infection can reach or you can injure the mental foramen which can lead to paresthesia so be careful while doing the rct of the mandibular premolar teeth as sometimes what happens is while giving the local anesthesia or during any kind of procedure you may injure the mental nerve which is coming out of the mental foramen just below this teeth coming on to the mandibular molars the axis shape is rhomboidal in shape and you can see there is a distal canal which is quite wide and there is a mesobuccal canal and a mesolingual canal so most of the file breakage occurs in the mesobuccal canal of the lower molars if you don't know so it is having two roots one mesial root and one distal root so this we have to keep in mind so this is the buccal cusp and this is the palatal cusp so this is the axis shape and uh, this have already done the opening i will show you again in the demo so now here you can see a set of various files which are kept so um, this is the coronal flaring file 
this is the path file this again is a path file then uh, this is is shaping file this is also shaping file this is also finishing file so you can use this sequence as we use in the pro table the color coding is same like purple then white it's a 15 number file we call it as a 4% 15 then this is the 4% 20 this is the 4% 25 similarly there are many different files of various different tapers so this is all 4% taper files so this is the coronal flaring files for the beginning you just need to know the sequence after that in the advanced course I'll be or in the later classes I'll be telling you regarding what file systems whether you should use a 4% or 6% so this is the SX file and this is the way we are inserting in the endometer you just have to press this button and just you have to insert it and you can hear a slight sound which ensures that it is nicely stuck to the endomotor so what happens sometimes is when you are using it on the patient sometimes it gets off from the endomotor and gets stuck in the tooth and it is very difficult to take it out so this is the SX so here I am already setting the endomotor to program 1 which the RPM is 200 and torque is 1.6 so and, and this is the LED which is there so anything above this torque it will auto reverse on its own see it's auto reversing so if I press it like this it's getting auto reversed so these are the file systems which I am using so this is a variable taper path file from Woodpecker this is uh, so you can see two two files are there so one file is 21 mm the other file is 25 mm sometimes the canine can be very long so we can get files as long as 31 mm also so if the walking length of the tooth is 19 mm you can use a 21 mm file if the walking length of the tooth is more than 23 or 24 you can use this 25 mm file so this is a path file which is a variable taper and ta about taper I have already discussed so this is a 4% 15 file this is a 4% 20 file this is a 4% 25 file so I usually extend my canal still 4% 25 so I'll show you how to fit the endomotor along with this file and uh, just you have to press this button which is just on the back side of the endomotor handpiece and you just insert it like this and give a slight rotation give a slight rotation and it will make a small sound so now uh, you have to see what RPM it is there so it, I have set it to auto reverse 250 RPM and 1 torque for the beginning you can do with less torque and this one I have already shown you with the files and this LED is working nicely so I will just remove the LED because it's too much light so you can see here how I am inserting the file like this so the, what is the advantage of rotary? Rotary RCT you can do the root canals very fast because you, know, you are not using your fingers you are just using your wrist so just a motion like this so since I have already prepared the canal it's rotating freely for example I want to show you the auto reverse function so directly what I will do is I will fit the 4.25 file in this and see whenever the canal is getting some kind of some kind of obstruction see it's getting auto reversed so I put it in the buccal canal now I'm putting in the palatal canal so it's getting auto reversed if it is getting some kind of binding or some kind of obstruction so similarly what initially file I have used so after this I have to irrigate and then I use the number 15 file again I have to fit it like this I hope you are finding this video useful so after the 10 number file or the path file we are using the 4% 15 or 4% 20 file this is 4% 15 various companies are having various specifications like I am using Neo Endo sometimes I am using Hero Shaper Gold sometimes I am using Pro Taper Next sometimes I am using Sidga files so there are many companies which will give you various deals and various numbering systems are there so the common ones are so this is a new endo file 
which I am using. This is a 4% 20 file. 20 means yellow in color. 15 means white in color. So this is another file. So now I have inserted it. So since I have already prepared it as you can see. So only one stroke has to be there. So now this is the last file which I am going to use. The RPM is set 250 and one top. So now you can see the gutter poker points which are available from 15 to 80 number size. So if you are using the K files you have to use this ISO size from 15 to 40 and then ISO size 45 to 80. But this root canal system is very consuming and time taking so we have shown in this video about the 4% 6% files and corresponding there are the 4% 20, 4% 25 gutter poker as well as the 6% 20 gutter poker. So here you can see the color coding the white is for 15, yellow gutter parka is 20 numbers, 25 number is simultaneously all the color coding which I have shown you earlier for the files it is same as of the gutter parka. So these are all 2% gutter parka. Now coming on to this, this is all 4% gutter parka. So you can see the size is a little bit thicker than the 2%. Now then you can see the 4% 25 gutter parka and this one is the 6% 20 Gattapaka 6% 20 Gattapaka files or GPs we have to use in the palatal canal of maxillary molars as I have told you already and on the distal canal of the lower molars similar to the Gattapaka we have the absorbent paper points ISO paper points 45, 50, 55 and we have the 4% paper points as well so we are going to use the 4% 15 paper points so it's available in various sizes. I use the 4% 15 ones or 4% 20 ones, 4% 25 paper points. So we have already done the BMP of the premolar tooth and now we are going to seal it with gutta paka. So after proper irrigation with 5% sodium hypochlorite solution, we have to wait EDTA solution so that all the dentinal tubules open. And after that, we have to insert two paper points so that all the canals become dry. So this is the way we have to insert it in the canal. So this is the way. So we have to keep it for some time so that the canals become dry. Then after that. So this is the sealer which I am using, Seal Apex and we should always use a good quality sealer and already I have mixed it to this consistency. So the you just have to apply it onto the gutta perka. After application in the gutta perka, what you have to do is you just insert it in the canal and little bit you have to rotate the gutta perka and it should be snugly fit into the canal. So after putting this inside, so this is a ball burnisher which I am using to seal and other instruments are also available which is really, uh, like battery operated and so I am just heating it. So you have to heat it till it is red hot. Then you just have to insert it and do like this. So your canal is sealed now. Now we will do the other canal. So now again we have nicely we are putting the sealer across the gutta perka and now insert it into the canal. To work in a patient and to work in a dummy there is a lot of difference so to heat it red hot and just little bit for a second you have to just do this and uh, you have to be very careful in the patient's mouth 
I suggest use the suction so that the smoke which is of the sealer which is coming out is get sucked by the suction. So now your tooth is sealed. Now you have to fill this with either composite or glass enamel cement, and uh, you have to send the patient after that. Then you have to send the patient for crown cutting or whatever procedure or whatever process we want to place. So that's all with today's video.